Welcome back. Our final day of the first week of our Crucible study, and now we are into the actual play. Hopefully you have read it. Hopefully you have either listened to it. Hopefully you've watched part of the movie, or all of the movie, if you have. Uh, well, I would say no spoilers, but it's just you, so uh, you know you, I'm not worried about you telling anybody how it ends. Let's talk about what's happened. Just in generalities, uh, you're supposed to have read through Act 1. Abigail, who is the uh, antagonist, who's the villain, villain, the the chief villain. There's several villains. Paris is one of them. The townspeople, etc., uh, are 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 villains. But Abigail's the worst. She wants Tatuba, who is the slave, to uh, put a charm so uh, Goody Proctor, who is John Proctor's wife. Uh, is killed. She's obsessed with John Proctor. Abigail is. She wants to be Proctor's wife. She wants to take the place of Elizabeth. And so, you know, it's just nastiness. It's just nastiness. Uh, Reverend Paris, who is her uncle, stumbles into the woods, discovers them dancing, and they are terrified of getting whipped and getting punished. And so things boil around. They ultimately end up blaming Tatuba and then uh, Tatuba, uh, basically, she sees that if if I admit that I admit that I worship the devil or I'm a witch, doing voodoo whatnot, then I will be saved. And so she basically lies. We think she lies. You know, it's never really said. The actual idea of if there are witches or not witches or voodoo, black magic, whatever, it's never it never you know discussed. It's it's never like said. Oh, there is or there isn't. So Taduba says, yes, I am. And then Abigail, always looking, Abigail within this entire first, within this one act, she changes her story like four times to suit her own self. Uh, she's terrified of getting in trouble. She sells people out. She sells her friends out. The one scene that I posted, how she goes and she tells them, if any of you, uh, she says, we danced. And if any of you utter a word contrary to what I say, I will come to you in the middle of the night and I will bring a pointy reckoning. She says, I'm going to come and kill you. And they're terrified of Abigail. And they are terrified of her. So they do exactly what they say, what she says. And so Abigail sees, after she's already sold to Tuba out, after she's already done that, she she sees that, uh, hey, Reverend Hale, who's the guy who came in, and my uncle, Reverend Paris, are, uh, they're saying, hey, we're going to save your soul to Tupa. And so she automatically starts saying, I saw all these people with the devil. I saw so-and-so with the devil and all the other girls. They follow after her, including Betty, who Betty has like been comatose on the bed. It, it's just, uh, hey, we see a way out. So they start naming all these people. They name all these people. I saw so and so, so and so, and this is what's going to start the frenzy. This is what's going to start the the uh, naming of names and like, just like with McCarthyism and, and all of that. So, uh, your common lit for today was uh, the Dancing Plague of fifteen eighteen, and basically, it's a it's a true account, true story how. Uh, people opened a suggestion. All of a sudden, people started dancing and they couldn't stop. Uh, you know, color me skeptical. Uh, I think that, I mean, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but uh, color me skeptical. I think that uh, it was quite a bit of uh, uh, peer pressure and uh, people uh, acting like they couldn't stop. All right, so let's read our, uh, our assignment. The Dancing Plague of 1518. Dancing Plague was a strange case of mass hysteria in Strasbourg, a village in present-day France. Hundreds of people in this tiny region were overcome by a sudden urge to dance to the brink of extreme exhaustion, sometimes death. For no apparent reason, she just started to dance. July of 1518, in full view of her neighbors, Frau Trophea began to violently dance in the streets of the city of Strasbourg, France. There was no music, and her face betrayed no expression of joy. She appeared unable to stop herself from the frenzy. All right, so this goes on, and it talks about it was not an isolated incident because the older people, the the, the elders, uh, you know, would have tr would have just chalked this up to one person, you know, demonic possession. They thought of witches and witchcraft and all that kind of stuff back then. They didn't understand modern science and issues with the brain. 
But then, by the end of one week, uh, more than 30 people were dancing night and day on the streets. Didn't stop there. And then by a month had passed, at least 400 citizens of Strasbourg were swept up in the phenomenon. Medical and civic authorities were called in once some of the dancers began dying from heart attacks, exhaustion, or strokes. For some inexplicable reason, these men believed that the cure for the dancing was more dancing. So they erected a wooden stage for the dancers and the musicians were called in. Uh, medical advice back in the 1500s wasn't exactly sound or logical. It all sounds like some archaic bit of folklore, but the dancing plague of 1518 is clearly chronicled. Medical, civil, civic, and religious notes of the time. All right, so here's a artistic representation of it. Modern researchers pore over those notes to develop theories as to what caused this bizarre incident. Now, here we go. These are all the theories of it. One of those theories postulates that the dancers were the victims of mass hysteria, which is what happens in uh, the crucible, uh, mob mentality, etc. Instances when more than one person believes they are afflicted by an identical malady, often during times of extreme stress within the affected community. The Strasbourg incident occurred during a time of rampant famine and malnutrition and subsequent deaths. But 400 people? A well-known recent incident generally seen as an example of mass hysteria is 1962's The Laughter Epidemic, which affected only 95 people. A second theory is in the realm of agriculture. The condition called ergotism occurs when grains of rye are attacked by a specific mold. Eating the infected rye can lead to seizures, although the movements of Strasbourg's afflicted look much more like traditional dancing than seizures of any sort. Final School of Thought states that dancing was a result of some kind of religious ecstasy caused by veneration of St. Vitus, the patron saint of epilepsy. None of the theories completely explain the 1518 dancing. Bit by bit, the dancer stopped, the dancing would end as mysteriously as it began. Uh, very odd. This article does not give any concrete reasoning for it because no concrete reasoning is known. I have uh, my own opinions, but I'm going to keep them to myself. So here we go. Which of the following statements best describes the central idea? B. In the early 1500s, a group of townspeople began dancing for no apparent reason. Even more troubling, they could not stop. Part B. The answer is A. July 1518, etc. Number three. The answer is B. Uh, what is the effect of the word choice and frenzy? This is, again, how we ask vocab questions. B, it implies a wildness and a lack of control. Number four is B. She appeared, no, excuse me, I apologize. Number four is D. She appeared unable to stop herself. Number five, the answer is D, which of the following statements most accurately describes the relationship between the dancers. The dancers were all part of the same village, were influenced in some fashion by one another to begin and continue dancing. Summarize one of the theories mentioned in the text that explains why the villagers... Okay, well, basically, uh, there's three at the very end. There's three uh, possible reasons, and each of them have holes. You know, the agricultural one, uh, well, it's a, it was a specific form of dancing. You know, it wasn't epilepsy. Uh, religious ecstasy, you know, that's that's the whole science versus religion debate. And then mass hysteria. I don't know, mass hysteria kind of makes sense to me. Other people are doing it, so they're going to keep doing it as well. I don't know. You know, it's, it's just a very odd thing. But you don't understand the way. We, we can't uh, try to get inside the heads of people that lived 500 years before us because, you know, it's a completely different uh, society. And what they believed and what they thought was completely different than us. All right, down here are these questions. Why do you think why do you think this event is referred to as a plague? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, you know, a plague, we generally think of a plague as like a disease that kills or like anything that harms. Like in the Bible, they talk about a swarm of locusts being a plague, you know, but something that seriously is a detriment to society as a whole. In the text-dependent section, you were asked to explain one of the theories behind the strange event. What do you think caused the dancing plague? That's up to you. I already just, uh, gave a little bit of my opinion. Number three, context of the text. Why do people follow the crowd? That's something that we've gone over before. Mob mentality, peer pressure, 
Why do you think people go along with things in a crowd that they otherwise wouldn't go along with? Everyone has done it at some point. All right, so let's wrap this up. That's the last uh, of this week. What you need to do before we come back is you need to read Act 2 or as much of Act 2 as you can. And you also need to do the uh, next common lit, uh, Witchcraft in Salem. And Witchcraft in Salem kind of just gives a little uh, look into the court, how things proceeded during the witch trials. And uh, it, it just give you more insight to the way uh, the legal proceedings were. It's not what you would think now with a lawyer and a defendant and a plaintiff. You were presumed guilty. You were guilty, not presumed. You, in their eyes, you were guilty. So read that. Read Act 2. And we're going to come back and we're going to get more into the character of John Proctor and Elizabeth Proctor. Proctor is one of the greatest characters, in my opinion, in, in uh, literature. And he's just an awesome person. He's based on the truth. He's based on a real, a real person by the name who went through all this. So it's so all these characters are. So read that. Get ready. And until I see you again, great day to be a warrior.